Hello and welcome to the Idiomatic Soft channel. In this video, we are presenting effect systems. Let's start by looking at what they say about themselves. For example, we had Cat's Effect, and its website says the purely asynchronous runtime for Scala. Another well known effect system is Zio, and its tagline on its website is Type safe composable, asynchronous, and concurrent programming for Scala. So we have two effect systems offering us a synchronous runtime for Scala, but the JVM is already an asynchronous and concurrent runtime for Scala. So why do we need them? So let's find out. Let's try to understand the problem that effect systems solve. To understand that, we first need to understand what an effect is. A nice definition of an effect is given in the paper Polymorphic Effect Systems by Lucasen and Guilford. And the definition says, the effect of an expression is a concise summary of the observable side effects that the expression may have when it is evaluated. For example, if we have an expression to print text to the console, the observable side effect of that expression is that text is appended to the console. So the effect, which is a concise summary of that, would be write to the console or more generally input output. We say that this function println has a side effect because the command that it executed was done outside of the program, on the side. That means that we cannot check that result in the program itself. We need to, in this case, for example, go outside of the program, look at the actual console, and check that the text was actually written there. Another example of effect is the modification of state. For example, here, we have that the observable side effect is that the variable x is now equals to 2. We call this effect state. Reading a state, modifying a state, changing a state, all of those operations are under the effect state. As before, we see that the modification of the variable happened on the side. That means that we need to go and fetch the variable and read its value to verify that the operation actually took place because the return value of the x equals 2 expression is unit, unit, which doesn't tell us neither if the operation was successful or not or something about the variable itself. The opposite of an effectful expression is a pure expression. A pure expression is an expression that does not produce any side effect. So the only thing that we can check in a pure expression is its return value. And we can get some help from the compiler to do that. For example, if we have an expression that returns an integer, we know and the compiler can check that we cannot use the value returned by that expression in another expression that requires a string, for example. Now we finally get to the actual problem with effectful expressions. The problem is that their observable side effects happen on the side, and that means that they are outside of the scope of the type checker of the Scala compiler. So, while effectful operations are absolutely necessary to write useful code, and you can use them directly in Scala. The problem is that you do not get help from the compiler and the same benefits that you would get using only pure expressions. That means that effectful operations cannot be checked by the compiler. Now, enter effect systems. The goal of effect systems is to bring in the type checker when programming with effectful expression. Now, before we dive in into effect system, it is important to note that there is a fundamental difference between the effect of println, printing to the console that we saw before, and the effect 
of changing a state x equals 2 that we also saw before. The first one happens completely outside of the computer and there is no way for the program to verify it. Maybe doing another effectful operation but there is actually no way normally to get that effect and verify that it happened. It could be, for example, the moving of a robot arm. On the other hand, the state, the changing of a state, for example, x equals 2, is inside of the program. And we can actually check that when the variable is in scope. So that's the difference between the two kind of effects that we already saw. These two kind of effects can be represented by monads. However, in the Scala jargon, when we talk about effect systems, we are talking about the former effect. This is the ones that happen completely outside of the computer. For example, database access, serving a website, file system access, writing to the console, and concurrent and asynchronous operations. These are the kind of things that your effect system will take care of. The most difficult to get right of those is concurrent and asynchronous operations. This is why CAT's effect and Zio both make an emphasis in those concepts. Now let's look at the benefits of effect systems. Classical effect systems like Zio or CAT's effect are based around the IO monad. Since Scala already lets you write effectful expressions in direct style, this is without using monads, what the IO monad brings to the table is that you can suspend the execution of those effectful expressions to be run later. This allows to separate the concern of defining the different operations that you are going to run and the execution of those operations. This provides separation of concerns. This is exactly what Zio and CATS are offering in their runtimes. You can define your operations using the IO monads and then run them on the powerful runtime that they provide. The IO monad provides the standard operations available to all monads, map, flat map, point, but each specific implementation of it can provide methods for common operations. For example, the IO monad in CAT's effect provides a println method and also a slip method. The advantage here is that the creators of the effect system can provide a very specific semantics for those methods using the runtime. This is a benefit for effect systems as they provide a domain-specific language for effectful operations. And the advantage of this is that the code written in this domain-specific language can be checked once again by uguess2, the type checker. Combining these two features, effect systems can provide extremely optimized runtimes with very precise semantics and all of that checked by the type system. Also, effect systems can provide features that are not yet available in the native runtime. For example, lightweight threads or virtual threads are not available in Java until Java 21. However, Zio and CATS effect users were able to use them for a long time. Effect systems can go beyond simple DSLs and runtimes. For example, CATS effect uses a tackless final approach. It provides different type classes to encode the different features provided by the effect system. For example, if you are writing code that will only run synchronously, then you would use the syncf type class. If you are writing code that will use the console, you would use the consolef type class. It has already happened to me that I'm writing purely synchronous code and I need to call a function from a library. 
and the compiler will tell me to use this function you need to pass the asyncf type class. Thus, it tells me that I'm introducing a synchronous code in my synchronous code. This property is called safety. Safety means that the compiler won't let the user do something it's not allowed to use. And this is another benefit of effect systems. Another approach to help users with effectful programming is the one followed by Zio. Zio assumes that the most common effects in effectful programming are error handling and dependency injection. So it provides a turbocharged IO monad that includes also these two effects. This makes it easier to avoid using monad transformers. And avoiding monad transformers helps the compiler to improve the type inference, which is not very good when you are using monad transformers. This, in turn, improves the experience when using effect the effect system, because we don't need to write all the time the different types as we would need if we were using monad transformers. So the benefit here of effect systems is that they can provide ergonomics. Finally, we will talk a bit about the new kit on the block, Kio. Kio is an effect system based on algebraic effects. Algebraic effects are a relatively novel concept. Basically, programming language researchers found a way to express effects using equations, and from there they, they were able to deduce that you can freely compose these algebraic effects. So algebraic effects are qualitatively better than the monadic effects that we see in Zio and in Cat's effect, because we don't need monad transformers at all. For example, in Kio, you can define effects with an arbitrary number of effects, contrary to Zio, which is limited only to dependency injection and error handling. So Kio is offering this by encoding these algebraic effects in the type system. I don't know the details yet, but the premise of Kio seems very promising and it may be the next effect system that we are all using. To conclude, let's look at the future of effect systems in Scala. In his talk, Direct Styles Scala, given at the Scalar Conference 2023, Martin Odersky shows us a glimpse of the future of effect systems and how all those monads and monad transformers might one day be replaced by direct style Scala code supported by algebraic effects. So in the future, you might have your effect system directly in the Scala language. If you like this content and it was useful to you, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You can also find in the description a link to subscribe to the mailing list to get updates whenever I post a new blog post or I upload a new video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon!